Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen Rose, you know I've got three kids. I got to wake up early. I'm completely washed and old. And I usually go to bed early. <laughs> Couldn't go to sleep early last night. I had to watch LeBron James because LeBron James put on a show. He always does, but this one was a little different. He hit six for nine three-point shots. Ended up with 36 points, seven rebounds, nine assists, 19 fourth quarter points. And at one point, it seemed like he hit four, five straight threes. Jalen Rose, what do you think about the three-point threat, LeBron James? Well, that's what you want from an all-time great player is his game to continue to evolve. And we know that LeBron James is one of the most powerful locomotives that the game has seen, driving the yep. basketball to the basket for layups, for dunks, and ones, all of that stuff. But then he started to evolve his game where he started shooting off the dribble and he got signature shots where he could turn over his right shoulder. He felt comfortable kind of trying to lift that left leg up when he shot the ball. And so he likes when he's dribbling left and leaning left to mm. shoot the ball. That's, that's become his money. And that's his heat check play. And so when he starts making that shot, he starts feeling good about his three-point uh, opportunities, he's going to be virtually unstoppable on certain nights. And that's what, unfortunately, the San Antonio Spurs ran into, scoring 19 in the fourth. So, Jalen, I want to celebrate LeBron James for a second for something that I noticed during the game last night. Now, I think that so much has been made of LeBron James's hairline and making jokes and, you know, <laughs> did he get transplants? And I think it's kind of corny at this point to keep making fun of us for his hairline. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to celebrate him for something. Because watching the game last night, I noticed something different about his hair. He kind of let the world know that he's got a little Manu. And you know what? He's like, I'm not going to try to cover it up. I'm not going to try to throw some Beijing on there. I'm just going to be myself. And he's evolved as a man to the point where he's comfortable having an imperfect hair. We all know what he's been through. We've all seen the befores and afters. And I feel like he's more mature now. He's a leader. He's a father. And he's so comfortable with himself that I feel like there's some correlation between him letting his hair free and him letting the ball free from three. I can predict oh. that him <laughs> stopping to hold on to his hairline will lead to the Lakers winning the championship this year. Remember where you heard it first on Jalen and Jacoby. <laughs> Uh, should I should I follow up and say anything after that? Is there, no, is there point, anything for me to say? Listen, all I have to say <laughs> is if you could have LeBron James's game, but you'd have to have LeBron James's hairline, which one would you pick? Oh, I pick his game. I think, I think you think you would game. too. I think you would too. <laughs> I pick his game. All no right. doubt about it. I ain't crazy. Well, moving on. Obviously, when you're talking about the Lakers, it's hard not to think about and honor the life and the tragic death of Kobe Bryant. And Dwight Howard, before Kobe passed away, Kobe and Dwight Howard famously had a very contentious relationship. And he said that he wanted Kobe Bryant to help him in the dunk contest. And our guy, Dave McMenamin, tweeted this. Dwight Howard says prior to the accident, he got word that Kobe Bryant was indeed going to come to Chicago and join him in the dunk contest to help him on a dunk. Dwight says it's heartbreaking that he never got the chance to tell him how much he appreciated him. Jalen Rose, my question for you is, what does this, the fact that Kobe Bryant was willing to, 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 to build this bridge and to show the world that they had changed and evolved, this relationship is different, what does that action or intended action tell you about where Kobe was at when he tragically passed away? So, like, he he was, his, his destiny was something that he was determined to make happen. And as a player, that carries you to the point where sometimes you feel isolated and or you feel introverted. That could be from your own teammates sometimes. That could be from the opponent. That could be from the media. And he wasn't somebody that did a lot of fraternizing. And so when you go out and accomplish everything that he was able to accomplish and then see in second act to the point where you get two numbers retired – that also gives you a chance the last handful of years to kind of evaluate the journey. And as we saw him ease into fatherhood and being a husband for public consumption and winning an Academy Award, he now became a Yoda of, uh, in, in a lot of sorts. 
mm. that somebody that took so much in his mind from the game that now he was going to reinvest it. So he was doing breakdowns of James Harden and Jason Tatum and mentoring players like Kyrie Irving and willing to squash his f- previous beefs with people like Dwight Howard. Um, it, it, it's just unfortunate that we didn't get a chance to see this moment and it's a lot uh, – it's, it's really tragic. We won't get a chance to see a lot of great things that are going to be attributed to his legacy, like his Hall of Fame induction mm. and him getting a statue outside of Staples Center. So th- these are going to be heart-wrenching moments to go with all of the um, tragic memories that we have of the loss of not only Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gigi, but the other seven victims as, as well. Well, to transition to from some bad news for the city of Los Angeles, we have some good news for the city of Los Angeles. The Los Angeles Dodgers were involved in a trade with the Red Sox and the Twins, and the big pieces coming to Los Angeles are Mookie Betts and David Price. Jalen, seems like the Dodgers have Mo- been so Mo- close Mo- to winning Mo- the World Series over the past four or five years. Can Mookie Mo- and Price take this team Mo- over Mo- the top Mo- and get them a championship? Mo- Mo- Mookie! I believe so. If you're the Dodgers, you're telling yourselves if the Houston Astros weren't flat out cheating, mm-hmm. we would at least won a World Series. So absolutely, you upgrade your baseball team when you add Mookie Betts, one of the best players and leadoff hitters in the game. David Price has shown clearly throughout his career he's going to be in the Hall of Fame one day that he can be a game changer and has been a champion. So to me, this is the Dodgers putting all of their chips in the middle of the table and going for it this season. Jalen, sometimes in the world of sports and pop culture, there are certain videos that need to be broken down in detail. So you and I have to go to the table. Right now, the city of Kansas City is celebrating their first NFL championship in half of a century. And Travis Kelsey, well, he got a little bit of a head start. Let's check in on Kelsey as he's on his way back to Kansas City, Missouri. See him on the plane. He is using the Lombardi Trophy as a beer luge to drink an entire beer off the trophy into his mouth. (laughs) Jalen Rose, would you do think this is a boss move or a soft move? Do you think this is, should he be concerned about germs? Like, what do you think about this move from Kelsey? I think that I do a television show with somebody that owes the program a shoey, like he promised. I'll do a shoey. So, so, somebody that has smashed beer cans on his head and taken all types of beverages and shotgun them and all of that stuff. All of that. All of that. That also plays a lot of basketball. He just had zero in his previous game. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And he whoa, wouldn't whoa. have beers have afterwards. You didn't have to bring that up. So if that's the case, of course I would drink it after I just want a Lombardi trophy. <laughs> Yo. You're drinking beer anyway. And you took a shower it. this morning. I'm you would be the opposite of Kelsey. You would do it off the Lombardi right and not now. take a shower. I think this is a trend-setting moment. I think that we will look back at this as the very first beer that was chugged off the Lombardi Trophy, but this is not going to be the last time <laughs> that someone drank a beer off the Lombardi Trophy. Travis Kelsey, you are an innovator and a trendsetter, and we salute you. Jalen Rose, there's a story about a man in Kansas City that did something that you won't believe, but it is true, and I cannot wait to tell it to you right after this.